Los Angeles as well as beta testers outside of LA? I don't have all of those numbers off the top of my head. So the first alert went out after 6.9 seconds. Um, and, and the details I don't know. But again, it went to a group of beta testers. There's a lot of tricky issues to be worked out before the system is, is fully ruled out. Um, as we've seen, there, you know, the communication and some of the decisions are, are difficult. Is, is the threshold um, for the USGS, is it different than the one for the county? Like, uh, when you'll send that out? I, I believe that's still under discussion, and we, there, there's a trade-off. If you're sending off alerts at a, a, when light shaking is expected, there's the there's a concern that people might start to kind of dismiss the alerts and, and not pay as much attention if stronger shaking is predicted. So the value of the system is really getting out an alert if people are going to experience damaging shaking. So what's the threshold for that? Six. Um, the, sh the threshold now, um, uh, I'm looking at the person who knows the answer, intensity five? Five. Four. Four. Okay. Intensity. 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 Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't have all the numbers off the top of my head. But intensity four, which is a level of shaking that will rattle your windows, uh, for example, and then intensity five is a level that might knock things off of desks. And what magnitude would that be? It really depends. It could either be a magnitude four earthquake nearby or a magnitude six and a half at 50 kilometers. Do we know where most of the aftershocks have been felt? Is it in a specific region or is it just spread out throughout? It's mostly in that, up, up in that region. I believe the 5.4 was felt to some extent into this area, but for the most part, they're going to be felt in Ridgecrest, Trona, and the, the desert communities. And you said two faults are involved. What are the two faults? Yeah, um, this general area is the, the Little Lake Fault Zone, and, and so there's there's many different faults that are within this region. Is that where the L-shaped pattern comes from? It is. It's those are two faults that are perpendicular? That's what we think, yeah. So the faults aren't named, it's just the Little Lake Fault Zone. Exactly. A fault zone is just a, a region that has lots of faults all within, yeah. I see. Given what you know about this seismic event so far, is there anything that jumps out at you or anything that's like really of interest to you two, the experts. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that this, the L shape is particularly interesting and that's something that we're going to be looking at in more detail, what, what that really means uh, in terms of the physics and things like that. Oh, but so if, that, if you can elaborate, like why that's of interest to you? Well, I, I mean, it's, it's looking more and more like many earthquakes have multiple fault ruptures and, and years ago that wasn't necessarily assumed to be the case. So um, why that might be is, is something for, that we need to understand better. And so could that potentially mean that you could feel like the, the, the sensation could go in like opposite directions, I guess? Uh, sure, it, it's, it's just important when, you know, for hazard purposes and things like that, that you consider all different types of scenarios. And so um, when multiple faults are involved, it becomes a lot more complicated. Um, and, that, and that's something that we need to look at more. Did the initial quake occur on one of the faults? Could I, um, yeah, actually, that's one of the questions we need to look at. So did one fault go and then the other? Was it separated by two seconds or 10 seconds? To some extent, it's a matter of semantics. Do you call it, we call it one earthquake because it happened close enough together and then we talk about sub-events. But that's one of the details that we really need to dive into the, into the data to look at. Um, one point here is that magnitude six and a half don't happen every day in California, and earthquakes that break the surface don't happen every day. So there's a lot of questions about surface breaks and you know their their relationship to what's going on at depth. So one of the the key scientific questions and priorities is to get people in the field, which is what they're doing, to to really record what happens because those features can be very ephemeral. If, when you say that aftershock activity could go on for years, how do you know it's an aftershock of the 6.4 and not just a smaller new earthquake? Uh, by looking at the long-term background rates in that area, going back, you know, potentially decades, essentially. So, um, I can jump in again. When we say an aftershock sequence is over when the rate of earthquakes in an area goes back to what the background is, that doesn't really mean the sequence is over. It means we can't detect them anymore because the rate is, isn't different from what it used to be before the major. Can you explain that 6.0 possibility again and how that kind of diminishes over the next few days? 
Sure. Um, there's always the possibility that an earthquake can trigger a larger one. Um, and so, uh, statistically speaking, when we look at lots of different sequences over the years, um, we can estimate, you know, how likely it might be that a given earthquake can trigger a larger one. And so, um, we found that as time goes on after a large event, uh, that likelihood decreases. So, um, we estimate something like a 6% chance as of now that there could be a larger event that occurs. An aftershock, but not another earthquake. It could be a, a larger event, uh, six plus. Oh, an earthquake. Oh. Yeah. And I'll say that would be within the next week. I, I didn't hear that. So, the, so just to clarify, there's we estimate that there's about a six percent chance of a magnitude six or larger earthquake happening, uh, and what, how large it would be would determine whether it's an aftershock or not. The time it could ultimately frame? be a main shock itself. What was the time frame on that? Uh, that's just going forward. That, that's as of right now. Is it six percent? Yeah. And that's in the general region, correct? Yes. Meaning Ridgecrest and that's right. Byron's. Mm -hmm. How about its effect on, say, the big one that we talk about, the, uh, the San Andreas? Side? Are there is there any data suggesting a connection? Yeah, probably not. It's pretty far away from it's San not Andreas. Not predictive for something that far away. Uh, Probably not. In what other tangible ways does the yesterday's quake and all the aftershocks affect us moving forward, um, looking forward to other events other than the 6% uh, the chance of the 6? Uh, <laughs> Is that too general a question? Yeah, I, I don't really understand the question. Um, I think uh, the odds that this earthquake is going to influence significantly faults away from the immediate area are very, very low. They're not zero, but we don't even try to do a forecast because the odds are so low. Um, it is well away from the, the San Andreas, for example. So we still, we always have the background rate of and probabilities of earthquakes on every fault in the state, and those don't change. We just superimpose the aftershock likelihood locally. So for most parts of California, we're at we, where we were before yesterday, before this happened. Can you describe the infrastructure of Ridge Crest a little more? Are there any uh, multi-story steel lower frame buildings or only concrete buildings? My, my grandparents moved to China Lake in 1946, so I can um, address <laughs> this one. So that the base was started after World War II, so that's where everything there is new. There aren't really any high-rise structures. There are um, department store type buildings. There are a few multi-story, two, three-story buildings on the base, but again, those would have been built after World War II. It, within Ridgecrest, it's mostly single-family homes. It's mostly wood frame, um, and they all would have been built at least to the building codes as they existed in 1933, which is after the, the Long Beach earthquake taught us about the peril of unreinforced masonry. Are there the, the malls be uh, post Northridge? Um, the newer homes would be, and so the building codes have gotten better in time, and the earthquakes have revealed vulnerabilities, and so the, the codes have been strengthened. Um, but um, any house that's sold in California with a mortgage has to be bolted to the foundation, for example. So um, they may, all the, the houses are not quite at the level of post-Northridge codes, but they're not, they're not bad. Are there any areas, though, that are of concern? I know that um, yesterday in uh, Lake Isabella, people were concerned about the dam. Are there any structures that, that if there were, you know, six plus or if it were a greater quake than the one we had yesterday, might be an area for worry? Yeah, I haven't heard about anything and any concerns for dams. There were some rock falls. There was some damage on the base, apparently including to their tower. Um, so I, I don't have a lot of details on that. Um, or the rock falls. Again, a lot of the, the strongest shaking would have been along that L that you see, and overwhelmingly that is in a remote part of the base, which was very fortunate. Several more questions. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. Uh, well, I, I just kind of close to the Los Angeles Aqueduct. Uh, any damage there? Amendment. If there had been, I'm pretty sure we would have heard about it. Tomorrow, does the risk for another quake go down to 5% or is that? Uh, if, if nothing has happened by then, then the risk goes down and we have to recalculate what that would be at that time. Okay. Yeah. Are there any significant uh, offsets 
can describe it. So the photos that I've seen, the offsets are on the order of 10 centimeters or a couple of inches, but the, the most dramatic surface rupture is almost certainly on the base. So that had, there are, that has been, um, there has been a preliminary reconnaissance and we expect to have that information very soon, but not right now. Do you know that the base structures were those also post um, World War II? Yes, because the base is po post World War II, so. Thank you. Are these images on light now? The ruptures? <coughs> Most of this is, uh, is available online. They're all on Twitter. Almost everything is available. <laughs> <laughs> Let me jump in. The USGS aftershock forecast is also online and it will be updated at this point, I believe sometime today, and then going forward uh, probably daily for a while.